I talk about reductionism. Reduction, like reducing one thing at a time. We argue to death over you know, how much fat or this kind of fat. Or this. It's all really kind of silly. We, we talk about these numbers all the time. And we have a lot of confusion in the field right now. We have that. I believe this, you believe that, all that kind of stuff. Well, it turns out that there's a reason why there's so much confusion. A lot of reasons. But one of which is the medical practice system itself. Namely, we t tend to assume when we do science, quote unquote, on something to learn something, we focus on one disease at a time. We focus on one cause. We focus on one mechanism. All those are false. They're really all false. Yes, we can see effects sometimes with a single nutrient, but usually it doesn't last or it's not whatever. We, used, we develop drugs to sort of focus it. One, there, this, that, that kind of thing. We get random side effects. So the training in the area of medicine is focused on the use of targeted drugs and the presumption that we're dealing with a disease one at a time under very specific conditions. That's medicine. That is medicine. In the meanwhile, in medical schools, there's not a medical school in this country that really teaches nutrition. It's left out of the equation. Now, yes, there's some schools will have up to 10, 15, maybe even 20 lectures, but that kind of information at that point in time is usually elective, number one, and number two is not the kind of nutrition that I talk about, I can assure you. So this is why nutrition is not taught in medical schools, because nutrition is a different animal. I shouldn't use that metaphor. <laughs> But nutrition is, is a, a broad-based thing. It's whole food, and it has these marvelous effects. It happens fast. There's lots of drugs, you know, so forth. It doesn't fit within the paradigm of reductionism that's typically found in medical schools. This is also why among the 28 National, or National Health Institute, National Institutes of Health, among the 28 institutes, I think it was 27 now, but of, of those, do you know there's one for heart disease, one for obesity, one for aging, one for this, one for that? Do you know there's not one institute that's been dedicated to nutrition? There is no nutrition, no National Institute of Nutrition. So what do we have? We have our professionals, our treasured, precious professionals going out to practice medicine. Not taught this subject, right? They're not even getting the kind of information they really deserve, you know, by having an institute of nutrition. And also, uh, I should say, there's no mechanism, there's no, no good mechanism for doctors to even be compensated for practicing this kind of medicine. We have, they, a lot of that depends on the number of medical specialties. There's, a number, there's about 130 medical specialties, I think, is the last count, according to Medicare programs, something like that. Not one of that, that's what generates opportunities for physicians to be paid. Not one. Not one of those medical specialties out of the 130 is for nutrition counseling. So we've shut ourselves out of the whole system. Nutrition has been shut out. This is a summary of what I already said about wholeness nutrition, all those things working together, whole food by based diet. And this one more thing, and I wish I had the time to explain to you. It's the most exciting part of what I think I've come to know. It really has to do with animal protein. Where did we get, where did we get that idea from? Why haven't we used it? Anyhow, nutrition works this way, whole foods. This is a heavily or highly integrated, interactive, wholeist system, I spell it with a W, minus the cult of animal protein. In other words, my, my advice is very simple. Let's not get caught in the weeds, talking about this nutrient or that vitamin. Or, forget that stuff. The big effect that we'll see for the average population, it's just two simple ideas. Simple. Try to stick with the whole foods. That doesn't mean we can't dice them and slice them and cook them and so forth and so on a bit. When I say the whole food, I'm talking about you take a bite of food, your, your body's able to use all the stuff in that, in that to work together. That's what I mean by whole food. If, so number one, consume a diet, basically whole foods, as much as possible. Number two, don't, don't eat anything. Try, try to avoid. Try to avoid foods that have animal protein in it. Not because of the animal protein itself necessarily, that's certainly a factor, 
but also because of all the other changes that occur in that kind of diet that feeds into the system. Those two ideas. Now, you might argue there's something else we should say, don't add oil or don't add sugar and that kind of thing. Fair enough. Um, because when we add stuff, keep in mind, we're adding things to outer context, especially like added oil. Added oil, most of it is pro-inflammatory, if you will, and causes mischief. So, but I say whole food, just let it at that. If we just spread that message to the, the rest of the world, just those two ideas alone, we would get, I'm convinced, at least 90% of the potential benefits that's out there to get to be obtained. And we could save 90% of the healthcare costs if everybody did that. We're getting so, we're co so caught up in arguing about these details, it's mindless. And then the people out there who should be doing something about it, they can't figure out what we're talking about. Well, I heard you say that, and you said that, that kind of thing. That is counterproductive. If we have to just really understand what whole food can do it, and if people don't understand it, just try it. Just try it. So anyhow, there's a, my book, Whole, where I try to elaborate on that. And I'm finishing up with this right here. Wholeness nutrition involves countless nutrients, mechanisms, and health outcomes that are all favorable. Wholeness metabolism within the cell is infinitely complex. It changes within nanoseconds of time, all for the purpose of nature. Wholeness nutrition is a constitutional effect, and history shows how it was suppressed with consequences. The new book I have is actually tracing that history. And I, I suggest, I don't be, mean to be pretentious in this case whatsoever about this theory of relativity, but I think that the realization that nutrients work together in the form of whole food, and, in, and the body is knowing all the time, okay, I adjust this, I adjust that, all of this is happening in a beautiful, beautiful symphony. Beautiful symphony. I call that the theory, of, that's the biological theory of relativity. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop there. I know I'm boring you. <laughs>